Welcome back everyone. As you might be able to hear, I'm a little sick. This video might be a day late. I usually try to post every two to three days because I put off actually recording the video for a day to see if I'd be a little better, but I can't put it off forever just because I don't sound great. So here I am. Like usual, we're gonna be looking at some new changes, some weird changes. Now I say that, but honestly, some of these changes aren't that weird. I just ended up basing the idea for this video on some specific changes that I'll be highlighting that I found very strange but I'll also just be fleshing out the content a little more by including some other changes made to guns in the update that I found unique in some way. We'll be starting here with the musket. This has always been a staple early game weapon as it's quite strong for how easy it is to get, only needing to use some bombs to break a shadow orb in the corruption to obtain it, and the devs decided to nerf it in the new update in one of the strangest ways I could imagine. They actually buffed the use time of the item from 36 to 32, meaning that it now fires slightly faster and made it so that the weapon no longer auto fires. And this is the extent of the changes. It's the weirdest thing to me because all they ended up doing is making the item statistically stronger, but making it feel more shitty to use, which is essentially what auto fire does in most cases, in my opinion. It makes items feel smoother and easier to utilize, and they decided to take it away, which I honestly dislike on any item, regardless of if it's strong or not. I just don't think it's a very good way to nerf things, but that's just my opinion, of course. In any case, it's kind of hard to tell how much of a negative change this really is for the musket, but I imagine that it will still be perfectly useful for what it's always been good for. The counterpart of the musket, the Undertaker, got buffed and is now much stronger, but those were just standard statistical buffs, so instead of talking about that, we're going to talk about the quad-barreled shotgun, which also mostly got standard statistical buffs. I told you I needed to flesh this video out, didn't I? Leave me alone. The quad-barreled shotgun got its damage reduced by three, but now fires two more pellets, and actually did have a somewhat unique change, which I found pretty cool, and isn't a concept for a buff that you have the chance to see for most weapons, which is that one bullet from the gun is always aimed accurately at the cursor. The spread at which the bullets fire from this weapon is very wide, and is completely luck based, meaning that you wouldn't always be able to land shots at all, at least from medium range, this giving the item an inconsistency factor which they're addressing. So now as long as you're pointing your cursor at the target you want to fight, at least one shot will always hit, which seems like a somewhat minor change, but to me honestly feels like a big boost for the item's viability. Next we have what is listed as a rework, quote unquote, for both the handgun and the phoenix blaster. Along with the musket, these were the other main weird changes that I wanted to highlight, mostly for comedic value because honestly you could just chalk up the strangeness to a simple typo, but it's just weird that it happened to both of the items in the patch notes, where both of them received large damage buffs and relatively large use time nerfs, doing what I think was just meant to be completely balancing out the damage of the items, which I will test out. I feel like the devs just couldn't decide if the changes were more of buffs or nerfs, so they decided to just slap rework on the items. Because why the hell not? I'm still upset that the Phoenix Blaster doesn't have auto fire by the way. Like I know it's modeled after a handgun, which isn't supposed to be automatic, and the weapon isn't bad as is, but come on, it would make the item feel so much better. Still waiting, Relogic. Now, just because I didn't want this to actually be a 3 minute video, and because this is an item that I've often just ignored over the years, mostly because of the mechanic that they added to it not being present, we're going to take a bit of a deeper dive into the Venus Magnum, our last and only hard mode item on the list. The Venus Magnum is a gun dropped by Plantera, and to me has always felt pretty useless. In the update, the Venus Magnum got a small nerf to its use time, being changed from 8 to 9, and is now auto fire, which is basically the opposite of the changes that they made to the musket, so I guess it would still fit in to the list perfectly with what I would consider a unique sort of change. The lack of auto fire is the main reason that I've never really checked out the item, because it has a very low use time, only two higher than the Mega Shark but not being able to auto fire made it rather difficult to make use of said use time, which is now an issue that has been fixed. This gun has an interesting property, turning all standard or tungsten slash silver bullets into high velocity bullets, though they retain their original damage. So if you want to use high velocity bullets, you're better off just using the actual thing, and you can still use all of these specialized bullets perfectly normally. I wanted to test out the Venus Magnum against a couple of bosses quickly, and also against what are, in my opinion, the two other mainstay fast-firing guns throughout hard mode, 
equipping the Mega Shark and the Chain Gun. So we'll do that first. While I've always felt the Mega Shark was just so much more incredibly easy to use than the Venus Magnum in previous iterations of the game, and is now plain and simply outdone, getting out damaged in every scenario by the Venus Magnum, and while it's not an insane increase in effectiveness, it is clear to see that the Plantera drop is just the better weapon, which I think is going to be somewhat refreshing when playing through the game as a ranger to be able to have this next option to use that wasn't really viable before. As expected, the Venus Magnum gets very severely humbled by the chain gun, except in the scenario where you're using normal bullets and the chain gun can only hit one enemy, while the Venus Magnum turns the bullets into high velocity bullets and is piercing the maximum number of three enemies, where it does out damage the faster firing weapon, which is, you know, a pretty niche situation to find yourself in, but it exists. Now there's two bosses that I want to quickly take a look at with this newly buffed weapon that come after you obtain it in game progression, being the newly buffed Rock and Kingfish. I tested this in master mode obviously with a pretty standard potion and item setup. The changes between the fights being that I switched my Fishron wings with Steampunker wings because wing power has an actual impact in the Fishron fight and my Ranger Emblem, Destroyer Emblem, and Putrid Scent with upgraded items that you need to first beat Golem in order to obtain. Even with both of these bosses being significantly buffed in the 1.4.4 update, the Venus Magnum paired with Chlorophyte Bullets basically just dumpstered both of them, like it wasn't even really close. I did a fight with Golem where I forgot to put on buffs too and he still got annihilated, so TLDR, Golem still sucks and Duke Fishron has always gotten bodied pretty hard by good guns with chlorified bullets, and this gun is now, in fact, good. And now that we've established that, I would love to torture myself with Empress of Light and Moon Lord fights trying to use this weapon for experimental purposes, but, uh, I actually lied in that sentence, and I really don't want to do either of those things. Even though the strength the Venus Magnum displayed in the boss fights I did try it in leads me to believe that you probably could manage to beat both of the next bosses. I could have also tested it against the Solar Eclipse and Pumpkin and Frost Moons, but this isn't meant to be an exhaustive video going over the Venus Magnum, which may surprise you considering it took up like half of the video, but I just didn't see myself actually making a separate video going into detail about this weapon, at least anytime soon, so I decided to just take a little crack at it in this one. That's going to be all when it comes to the strange and interesting gun changes that came with the new update, or what to me were strange and interesting gun changes at least. I also really wanted to cover the new flamethrower changes in this video, but then remembered that it's a flamethrower, not a gun. So that will probably come in a video pretty soon because I actually really want to take a look at the variety of changes the standard flamethrower and the elf melter got in greater detail. So keep a lookout for that. I'll be heading off though, and I'll see you all in the next one.